Atomic bombing on Nagasaki. The city Hiroshima was bombed on August 9, 1945. Since there was no indication of Japan surrendering, they decided to proceed with dropping another bomb. Parsons said that Project Alberta would have it ready by August 11th, but Tibbetts pointed to weather reports indicating poor flying conditions on the day due to a storm, and asked if the bomb could be ready by August 9th. Parsons agreed to try to do so. The city of Nagasaki had been one of the largest seaports in southern Japan, and was of great wartime importance because of its wide-ranging industrial activity, including the production of ordnance, ships, military equipment, and other war materials. Although an important industrial city, Nagasaki had been spared from firebombing because its geography made it difficult to locate at night with an slash APQ-13 radar. Responsibility for the timing of the second bombing was delegated to Tibbets. Scheduled for August 11th against Kokura, the raid was moved earlier by two days to avoid a five-day period of bad weather forecast to begin on August 10th. Three bomb assemblies had been transported to Tainian, three on their exteriors. On August 8th, a dress rehearsal was conducted off Tainian by Suinai using Boxer as the drop airplane. At 3.49 on the morning of August 9, 1945, Boxka, flown by Suinai's crew, carried Fat Man, with Kokura as the primary target and Nagasaki the secondary target. The mission plan for the second attack was nearly identical to that of the Hiroshima mission. During pre-flight inspection of Boxka, the flight engineer notified Suinai that an inoperative fuel transfer pump made it impossible to use 640 US gallons of fuel carried in a reserve tank. This fuel would still have to be carried all the way to Japan and back, consuming still more fuel. Replacing the pump would take hours. Moving the fact man to another aircraft might take just as long and was dangerous as well as the bomb was live. Tibbets and Suinai therefore elected to have Boxka continue the mission. After three runs over the city Kokura, and with fuel running low because of the failed fuel pump, Boxka and the Great Artiste headed for their secondary target, Nagasaki. Fuel consumption calculations made on route indicated that Boxka had insufficient fuel to reach Iwo Jima and would be forced to divert to Akainaiwe, which had become entirely allied occupied territory only six weeks earlier. After initially deciding that if Nagasaki were war on their arrival the crew would carry the bomb to Okinawa and dispose of it in the ocean if necessary, Ashworth agreed with Sweeney's suggestion that a radar approach would be used if the target was obscured. At about 7.50 Japanese time, an air raid alert was sounded in Nagasaki, but the all-clear signal was given at 8.30. When only two B-29 Super Fortresses were sighted at 10.53, the Japanese apparently assumed that the planes were well on reconnaissance and no further alarm was given. A few minutes later at 11 o'clock, the Great Artiste dropped instruments attached to three parachutes. At 11.01, a last-minute break in the clouds over Nagasaki allowed Boxgress Bombardier, Captain Emmett Beerham, to visually sight the target as ordered. The Fat Man weapon, containing a core of about 5 kilograms of plutonium, was dropped over the city's industrial valley. It exploded 47 seconds later at 1,650, 33 feet, above a tennis court, halfway between the Mitsubishi Steel and Arms Works in the south and the Nagasaki Arsenal in the north. This was nearly three kilometers northwest of the Plan Hippo Center. The blast was confined to the Eurekama Valley and a major portion of the city was protected by the intervening hills. The resulting explosion released the equivalent energy of 21. Tonight, Boxka flew onto a Kainaiwe, arriving with only sufficient fuel for a single approach. Sweeney tried repeatedly to contact the control tower for landing clearance, but received no answer. He could see heavy air traffic landing and taking off from Yonten Airfield. Firing off every flare on board to alert the field to his emergency landing, the Boxka came in fast, landing at 140 miles per hour, 230 kilometers per hour, instead of the normal 120 miles per hour, 190 kilometers per hour. The number two engine died from fuel starvation as he began the final approach. Touching down on only three engines midway down the landing strip, Boxka bounced up into the air again for about 25 feet before slamming back down.
the heavy B-29 slewed left and towards a row of parked B-24 bombers before the pilots managed to regain control. Its reversible propellers were worked to slow the aircraft adequately, and with both pilots standing on the brakes, Boxer made a swerving 90-degree turn at the end of the runway to avoid running off it. A second engine died from fuel exhaustion before the plane came to a stop. Although the bomb was more powerful than the one used on Hiroshima, its effects were confined by hillsides to the narrow Eurekama Valley. Casualty estimates for immediate deaths vary widely, ranging from 22,000 to 75,000. In the days and months following the explosion, more people died from their injuries. Because of the presence of undocumented foreign workers, and a number of military personnel in transit, there are great discrepancies in the estimates of total deaths by the end of 1945. A range of 39,000 to 80,000 can be found in various studies. Groves expected to have another atomic bomb ready for use on August 19th, with three more in September and a further three in October. On August 10th, he sent a memorandum to Marshall in which he wrote that the next bomb should be ready for delivery on the first suitable weather after 17 or August 18th. Two more Fatman assemblies were readied and scheduled to leave Kitlin Field for Tynion on August 11th and 14th, and Tibbetts was ordered by Lemay to return to Albuquerque, New Mexico, to collect them. But on August 12th, the Emperor informed the Imperial family of his decision to surrender. Hirohito recorded on August 14th his capitulation announcement which was broadcast to the Japanese nation the next day despite a short rebellion by militarists opposed to the surrender. Thus the World War II came to an end due to the surrender of Japan. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to Footprints for more videos.